If you want to watch the whole show exclusively on odds.com, just hit the link at the bottom of the screen. Let's move on to Sunday action here. Sunday, we are going to start. We should do the rotation numbers, shouldn't we? I, I accidentally dropped everything out of the rotation numbers, which is my fault. So why don't we stick with our plan with the rotation numbers, which means we start with Titans, Jaguars. Let me move my notes over there. Because I'm going to go out of order with my notes, scream if I miss a 1 p.m. game and let me know. Okay, Titans, Jaguars, rotation number 153-154. Titans, oh, that's first half, excuse me. Let me move over to full game, money lines, and totals. <laughs> Dex. Okay, Titans. Jaguars, Titans 8-4, and 4-1 four, four and one on the road at the Jacksonville Jaguars. 1-11, 1-5 at home, TIAA Bank Field, Jacksonville, Florida. 73 Fahrenheit, partly cloudy, 9 miles per hour is the win. The – oh, I'm still on first half, sorry. The Jags are open as 9.5-point dogs at Bet365. That quickly moves down to 7.5-point dogs. This total goes from 54 down to 52 and a half. And I know this is a divisional spot where the Jaguars often step up towards the Titans, but I certainly think that the Jaguars are playing okay football and they just played against a Vikings team. That's just been underwhelming game after underwhelming game, sort of like the Steelers. Uh, and it's, you know, I saying that about a team that loses their first game of the year is strange this deep into the season. But I think there's a recency bias going on here. Titans coming off an ugly 41-35 loss at home to the Browns. They were down 38-7 at halftime. Tanhill 29-45 for 389 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. Corey Davis had a giant game, 11 catches, 182 yards. Derrick Henry had a rare off game, 15 runs for 60 yards. Their defense was shredded in the first half. Tight end Johnu Smith. And cornerback Adoree Jackson were inactive, questionable this week. Jaguars coming off their 11th straight loss, 27-24 in overtime in Minnesota. Glennon, 28-42 for 280 yards, one touchdown, two picks. Also lost a fumble. The second interception in overtime sealed the Jags' fate. James Robinson continues to play well, 18 runs for 78 yards. Colin Johnson was the leading receiver, catching four passes for 66 yards. Center Brandon Linder, ankle injury, questionable. Then we have LaVisca Cheneau, who had a thumb injury. He left early. With the thumb injury, he did catch all three of his targets for 38 yards, and he ran twice for 30 yards, but he's listed as questionable this week. Uh, cornerback Sidney Jones, Achilles inactive. So that le leaves the Jaguars without four of their top five cornerbacks. Uh, linebackers Dakota Allen and Kamali Correa were out last week or questionable this week. Dennis Garcia says, trusting Tennessee to lay any kind of points hasn't worked out for anyone at any point. Birdie says, I think people are going to want the Titans here, thinking they will bounce back. I've been saying it for a few weeks. Jags D is playing fast right now. Just shut Cook down. Same look this week. And, I mean, Cook still ran for 120-odd yards, but he did run 32 times. Uh, Bebsy, take it away. Titans, Jags. Yeah, I I agree and I disagree with Birdie here. I, I think he's, he's right in the sense that, uh, you know – the Jags defense is playing fast, but here's the thing. I, I think there is recency bias in the fact that people are looking at the Jags game last week in, in which, you know, they almost beat a, a Minnesota team that's been winning. At least they haven't been winning pretty, but they've been winning. And then the Titans just got smashed by the Browns. So I think the pub, the public could bet this down and then it's a jump on the Titans and jump on the Travis Henry rush prop when it comes up because his rush prop was kind of high. He didn't even come close to it last week against the uh, against the Browns. So I expect that prop to drop a little bit and I expect him to ha him to have a bigger bounce back game. And look, if Henry has a bounce back game, the Tennessee Titans have a bounce back game. So I do like that look, especially if this keeps getting bet down. Slat says, if Jags really wanted to win, Mike Glenn wouldn't be starting. This looks like a get-right spot for the Titans. This draft means something. Uh, how can they keep going with Glennon? Glennon didn't play terrible, but those two picks, that one fumble, I mean, don't it, they want to see what they have? Look at Mike Glennon. Mike Glennon will play 
he'll look good until he looks awful, and he does. He he, he looked decent until he had monumental turnovers, which has been his entire career. So, yeah, overall, he's bad. I, I do think they are. I, I think they're trying to find the right combination to make it look like they're winning or trying to win and do something different, but still lose. Why would they? Why would they want it? Well, they came very close to getting their hands on Trevor Lawrence this weekend. And then they came very close to blowing that. So, you know, in, in, uh, in the end, nothing changed. It's still one and two, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. Is did they say Glenn's going to start again? Well, no. And we should probably wait till we have, you know, black and white information from our own, but but Minshew was available to play last week. So I just I'm confused. Was he available in that I mean, was he hundred percent? Was he questionable? Or was he straight up available and they're like, let's go with Mike Lennon? That's what I took from it. I took that he was straight up available and let's go from Mike, let's go with Mike Lennon. I would love if anybody else has some insight here on what's going on because it was extremely confusing. And I didn't bet on the Vikings, but Slats and I are very close. I mean, we're in different pools, but we're very close to multiple thousands in a survivor pool. There's three people left, and there's still three people left. I couldn't believe no one took the Seahawks. No one took the Seahawks in mine, and um, we were very fortunate to win. The I agree with what – what Birdie's saying, this Jaguars team is playing well. I'm just so confused. Oh, yeah, and AB says Minshew was the backup. Well, there you go. And Marone said they're sticking with Glennon. Jesus. It's crazy. I I don't know. I, I, can, I can see the public still backing the Jags the way that – recency biases are huge. And look, them forcing overtime – against the Vikings. I, I think people people, people want to believe in the Jags. They really do. And especially with the way Robinson's running the ball, like I think there is – there's fool's hope in them. So if this keeps getting bet down, this feels like an easy play for the Titans. Because I, I don't love where it's at right now. I'd like to take the Titans, but I'd like to get a little bit better number. And so maybe it's wishful thinking on my part that this still goes down a bit. Yeah, I just can't. Um, I just can't back the Titans right now. I, I just can't do it. I can't do it. Leonard Wells says the one, only thing I trust is that Tennessee offense. It was interesting. I so what do you think about this market move? And then, sorry, we're taking too long on some of these games. I just enjoy it very much. But uh, what do you think of this market move? On the total, Bet365 opens it at 54. It's now down to 53. The leading indicator offshore has moved it to 52 and a half. Yeah. I mean, given how bad the Tennessee defense has played, I I can see why this is that high. And I, I think I would still probably lean the over. As much as these are two run balanced teams, you got to figure if Glennon's playing, there's going to be some turnovers. Uh, and there's there's going to be some scoring. So give me a free play, I'd take the over. But but my look in this game is is for sure going to be that Henry Rush prop. I don't think he has two bad weeks in a row. And again, opening at nine and a half and already being down to seven and a half. If I can even get a seven, see if I could get. If I could have got Jaguars at nine and a half, I would take it right now. Uh, I still, sorry, I was just, I, I think, I'm starting to think that the Des Bryant thing is so funny. Uh, it's so funny. <laughs> they swab his nose and he calls it a career. I just, uh, I mean, you know how hard he's worked to get back in the lineup. He's a, he's an emotional guy, but <laughs> it, you know, and in fairness, like he, he worked hard. He got picked up by the Saints and then he tore his Achilles in, in, in yeah. practice yeah that was sad this and is then, funny. yeah well that was it was tragic but then this is just like i i get where his his emotional brain is at it's just like well i worked so hard i got back in now i got covid but dude take your regeneron or whatever the shit that is and you know 
to have a nap and rest yourself and get all your drugs that they're going to give you because you're a pro athlete and get back on the field, man. Dan Kelly says he was out on the field warming up before the game. Just a roller coaster ride. See, the thing about the thing about if I was running a sports franchise, I would have a psychologist on payroll all the time. And not because to deal with situations like this, it's just that so that I don't draft and trade for guys like this. I do not want a roller coaster ride in my locker room. Oh, absolutely. He stubs his toe, and then what what's gonna happen next? You know, he's gonna retire. Like I just uh or he won't take take the field because he thinks he's going to have bad luck. And I'm like, I just I don't want that shit anywhere near me. Okay. Um, Dale S. says, reason why Glenn looks so good is he's playing for a job. Okay. Uh, I'm Okay. I'm going to make no move at this point. Uh, I can understand your Henry Rush prop. I'm going to make no move at this point. 